The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 30th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we can go check on the circumstance. We're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, but you've got a question, we've got you covered. Send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're in a site or a tiger's den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magnificent, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Slightly mixed bag out there. The mix is coming from the semis, which are down 43 points. We're going to check on the semiconductor index for sure. But you've got the Dow trade up 350 points, 1% move, 8 tenths for the S&P or 32 points, 8 tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 121 points there, a quarter percent for the Russell, about a four-point move. To the downside, um, what do you've got? Well, as I mentioned, the semis are down 43 points out there. You've got gold trading up 8 bucks at 20 2006. Silver's trading out at 23.39. That's a 50 cent move up there. Lights be crude taking a bit of a breather. It's down 82. Uh, it's down two dollars and 89 cents. Trading out at 82.65. Natural gas off a nickel trading at 3.16. And the 30-year Treasury down a half a point. Trading at 109.02. Leading the charge dollar wise. The upside. We've got Mercado Libre up 28 bucks, a little over two percent. Beijing. What is it? Bang. I don't know what the. Don't. Don't know that he has how to pronounce that name. Never have. Twenty bucks the upside though. It's B G N E. It's up eleven and a half percent. Adobe. I know how to pronounce that. Nineteen bucks or nearly four percent. MicroStrategy almost five percent. Nineteen bucks. And Charter Communications a three and a half percent move. That's thirteen points the upside. The movers and the shakers. The shakers are Revidity down eighteen bucks, eighteen percent. On Semiconductor down fifteen bucks and eighteen percent move there. Excel's Technologies fourteen bucks, ten percent. Franco Nevada down eleven bucks. That's an eight percent move to the downside and NXP semiconductors off about 11 bucks nearly six percent there but let's begin by taking a look at the um, let's look at the equity future contracts for that we're going to go ahead and change our screens out here momentarily we'll be on the white background screens we'll take a look at the daily and the weekly uh, the ES, the NQ, the YM, and the Russell 2000. Did I change it? I did not change it to the right spot. Good Lord, Stevie. That was pretty – if you had seen that on my screen, you would have been like, what's that guy thinking? Exactly. That's what I was saying to myself. What is that guy thinking? Okay. Now we're back to the uh, place where we need to be, the white chart. So the ES Mini, upper left-hand corner, daily time frame, you're going to see that today is going to complete a Roge Mictum indicator bottom pattern. This will be the day following bar number nine. Now, bullish reversal candle, right now you got a bull sash candle out there. That would confirm a Roge Mictum indicator bottom. Both these bottoms, or at least one of the bottoms, should signal a move for the pri for price to get up to that oscillator and change line, 42.15. Now, this chart here is not showing you that new profile that is attempting to form inside the ES Mini. That new profile has, so let me give you those levels, 41.46, and won't be confirmed till 6 p.m. 
uh, this evening, but 41.46 is the current level of support and resistance. First level is at 42.44, second level at 43.17. So you got 42.15, that would be the first stop or resistance level, uh, and they move to the upside or thereabouts. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, last week negated its buy the D point, its Gartley buy pattern. We'll switch over to our weekly charts and take a look at the two different A to B equals CD down patterns that are present there. What they need, regardless, though, is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. In case of the daily NQ, it's going to complete a TD9 count bottom today. It should target its oscillator and change line, 14,590. Uh, 14, yeah, 14,590 is the current print. It also is attempting to form a new profile support at 14,240 and resistance up at 14,838 to 14,938 out there. So 14,590 would be the first stop. As far as its weekly time frame chart, it does have an A to B equals CD to the downside. It needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Gartley buy pattern. Short of that, price is telling us it wants to target 13,678.50. In the case of the Dow, the Dow is forming bar number eight today. If it was a bullish reversal candle that formed today, it would generate a rose momentum indicator bottom. Otherwise, it needs to poke below Friday's low today or tomorrow and Today's close, as an example, in order to generate a TD9 count bottom, today's close is going to need to be below 33,269. Tomorrow's close would need to be below 33,150. The weekly charts, A to B equals CD to the downside. It needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. The Russell 2000 basically looks ugly. Negated its TD9 count bottom pattern um, last week on Friday. Uh, we saw a rally this morning. It's got a rose momentum indicator signal. That requires a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom there. But the rally that took place today ran right into resistance at its oscillator and change on that red line. That's a little booger out there. If price were able to close above it, that would be off to a start of at least a rally up to the 1731-ish area out there. But right now, it is the weak link out here. And on the daily time frame, weekly time frame that is a negated a td9 count bottom pattern a couple weeks ago needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom let's switch back to those other charts and take a look at the weekly time frame just to give you some of their price projection levels out here but do remember at least the daily es and the daily nq and several other indices are signaling to you and i that they are attempting to form a bottom here are the weekly charts let's just expand it out a tad now well we've got some trend line areas out here so to the downside trend line support we're going to call it in about the 3980 ish type range out there now there are two potential a to b equals cd patterns to the downside let's put in the conservative one or the smaller one they both use the same a point that's the high from july 24th then the b point is the low from august 14th on the first one and then a retracement into august 28th that was a six a little 69 percent retracement you can see prices in it the one to 1.618 expansion of that c to d leg its next price projection target would be 40.28 that is and that's if we get a close Close below 41.36. Now that's one A to B equals CD. Just to make it well, actually, let me get rid of this one. We'll clean it up. The second one could look like this: the same A point that we would use, but the B point would be down here. This hammer candle from October 2nd. Then we've got a one week retracement up into high on October 9th. We get a 43% retracement. That one to one would get us down to the 39.82, and that would run right into that rising trend line resistance level. That's what we have going on. We take a look at the ES with regard to the NQ. We can see we've got descending trend line resistance, price below profiles out there. There are two uh, A to B equals CD patterns that can be drawn in here. Both use that same A point. That's the week that began July 17th. The first A, a B point would be August 14th, and then it's retracement two weeks up into August 28th. We're at the one to one level just below that. The next price projection level is 14.008. We'll finish looking at the weekly charts as soon as we get back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors C -c -c call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 320, S&P 26, NASDAQ 193, Russell's up uh, three, and the semi's still down uh, 55 points. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I had a unique experience yesterday. I was with my two oldest granddaughters. One will be turning 16 in uh, March. The other just turned 14, and I was teaching the oldest how to parallel park yesterday. So that was a, a pretty cool experience. And then we let the uh, younger one, the 14-year-old, uh, drive as well. In any event, let's get back to these uh, markets out here. We were taking a look at the A to B equals CD to the downside patterns. We we're looking at the NQ when we uh, finished. We're taking a look at the second A to B equals CD pattern. And that has a 52% retracement. The 1-1 one, one price projection will be down to 13,795. Now, I'm not suggesting that price is going to get down to these levels unless we see closes below the bottom of those daily TD nine count. So for the NQ, the number to be watching is a low from October the 26th, and that low is 14,140.25. You get a close below that, that tells us we're headed lower. In the S&P 500, the ES Mini, if we get a close, this is a daily close that you need. If you get a daily close below 41.22.25, that tells us that the A to B equals CD patterns that we're looking at here on the weekly time frame for the ES and the NQ, uh, that they likely will come to fruition. Now, if we take a look at the Dow out here, Dow equity future contract, it has uh, two potential A to B equals CD patterns that we could draw in as well. Let's take a look at the conservative one, which has already achieved the one to one level, maybe the one to 1.618 even. But let's go find out. And that is, yeah, it's uh, actually the one to 1.618, which is basically about where it's sitting right now. That's in the 32,621-ish range. So I'd say we get a close below uh, last week's low at any point in time, even on a daily basis. Odds would favor a move to 31,941. Now, that's the small one, so to speak. Let's take Look at the little bit larger A to B equals CD pattern. We still use the same A point. Again, the high from the week that began July 24th, but the B point is all the way down here at October 2nd. The C point is a two week rally uh, that took us into the bottom of that profile, and that would give us a one to one price projection of 31. 
157. Now, in the case of the Dow, we don't have a daily bottoming pattern. So I can't give you a price level to say if we close below, that says that we're headed down to those levels. What I would do is I'd keep my eyes on the ES and the NQ since they're the ones with the uh, with the best signals out here at the moment. And out to the Russell 2000, there's really only one A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. And this is the bigger one. It's the only one, really. It's the one where we'd start with the A point, this on a weekly basis, the high that came in uh, the week of November 8th, 2021. The B point is all the way down here, and that gets us at June 13th of 2022. It does a retracement, forms that high, 48% retracement into August the 15th. One to one would get us down to the 1293 level. Now, do remember, both the ES, I'm sorry, both the N. Both the YM, the Dow, and the RTY, the Russell 2000, on their daily time frames, do have Rhodes Momentum Indicator signals. So if we did get a daily bullish reversal candle, that would suggest that we've got bottoms. Then we'd have potentially bottoms for all four of the U.S. equity future contracts, and we would expect them to rally. Why would we expect them to rally? Well, the signal is pretty simple. If we take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange, it's advanced decline oscillator. We have a series of, in essence, higher bottoms out here with regard to that advanced decline oscillator. That's panel number three that we're taking a look at. What's panel number one show us? That's where price is at. That shows price moving lower. That sets up that divergent pattern. That suggests that we should see a bottom. Well, when would we see the bottom in, Stevie? Um, you know, if you've got that pattern out there. Okay, excellent question. So we'll answer that question. How do we answer it? We would look for a signal from the actual daily time frame chart for the New York Stock Exchange. At least that's the way that I would do it. All right, well, if that's the way you would do it, well, then go do it, Steve-O. All right, well, let's go do that. Let's go take a look at the daily time frame for the New York Stock Exchange and look at its patterns. What do we have? Today is going to confirm a TD nine count bottom. It will confirm that pattern as long as price closes below, and it looks like it'll easily be able to do that, 1508610. No, no, I'm sorry. 1502576. 1502576. That's where price would have to close below to negate that signal. But if that happens, that'll generate a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. So right now, you're going to get a bottom pattern. You may get two bottom patterns that form today. The TD9 count pattern wouldn't complete till tomorrow. But we've got that divergent pattern where you've got the advanced client oscillator is saying, sorry, don't want to go lower, not just yet out here. And instead, I want to rally. And that rally in the New York Stock Exchange, its first target to the upside would be at 14.905. Its second target would be either retracement of this leg down or get all the way back to that swing point in the 15,600 area. Let's just stay with these other cash indices out here. Because in addition to the New York Stock Exchange, a great signal today that, in fact, we really are getting ready to balance bottom would become from the semiconductor index. We want everybody participating in this rally. And in the case of the semis, they formed a TD nine count bottom. They did that. Let me get my cursor out here. They did that a couple of days ago. That was on the date of October 26. Now, right now, that swing point is being tested. And if the semis, the socks that I'm referring to, closes below 3173.55, it negates that pattern. And then it kind of makes the uh, bottom call somewhat suspect out there, although there's certainly an A to B equals CD to the downside out here, or there's more than one of those. And so a bullish reversal candle could form a bottom there as well. But what you really want to do is watch the semi stay. Do they rally back and do they close back above 3188.42? And if they do that, then that would be signaling to you and I that the market is getting ready for at least a two-day rally, perhaps something longer than that. With regard to the other cash indices out here, the Dow Jones, much like the equity future contract, needs a bullish reversal candidate to confirm a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. Today, you're going to complete a S&P 500 TD9 count bottom. You've already... You're going to complete a TD9 count bottom for the NDX 100. The Russell 2000 cash indice needs a bullish reversal candle. The transports, they negated their TD9 count bottom on Friday. So the only thing that could save that chart from the patterns that I use would be a bullish reversal candle. That would be a buy the D point. NASDAQ Composite also going to complete a TD9 count bottom pattern today in New York Stock Exchange. We already covered out there. So in essence, that's what's going on with regard to the equity markets, whether we take a look at the futures or the cash indices. Let's go spend some time with some of the requests that have come in. The first one coming in from Alton, and Alton would like to take a long position inside of the healthcare sector, XLV. Now, if you're taking a look at this chart here in the daily time frame, that's in the left-hand side, what's the first piece of advice that you would give to Alton? He's looking for an entry point into the XLV. Has this bottom just yet, based upon the tools that we use here between 11 and 12 noon? And the answer would be no. We would say, hey, Alton, this has got some potential. 
you're in bar number eight today. But what needs to happen is the XLV has to spike below Friday's low. And to spike below Friday's low, that means it's got to tick below 122.59. Now, it can do that today, it can do that tomorrow, or it can do it on Wednesday. So keep the powder dry, wait for a TD9 count bottom pattern to form, and then that would be your trigger to go ahead and take a long position. Now, going along with that is the weekly time frame chart. And the weekly time frame chart this week will form a TD9 count bottom so long as price closes below at week's end below 130.01. We're trading at 123 and change right now. So that's a likely outcome. And we take a look at the monthly chart, price is sitting right at profile support. So the best bet out here, well, at least what I see when I take a look at the chart patterns out here with regard to the healthcare sector is wait for the next couple of days. Let's see if you can get a TD9 count bottom in place out there or some type of bullish reversal candle. There may be a buy the D point pattern as well, but we'll just take things one step at a time because you don't have that as we speak right now. So all then just sit tight. Keep looking in the XLV and right back to me, you know, tomorrow, Wednesday, we'll continue to look at that for you. Steve Rhodes with TFM. We come back to this break. We're going to look at BFC, Apple, Tesla, the XLY, SPYG, IBRX, and maybe a few more. Be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's uh, take a look at VFC. My apology. I did not write down who requested which symbols out there. Um, I d just didn't get to it, and I didn't get a chance to go back. But I'll just give you the, for, uh, the thorough review on uh, these instruments. So VFC, what VFC did on Friday was it confirmed an A to B equals CD to the downside. Its B point out here was a trading day of October 23rd. That volume was 7 million shares. And on Friday, it passed that B point with uh, 9.4 million shares. Now, the one-to-one -one price projection gets us into about the 1663 level. The retracement here was a 618. It's actually about 63%. So what you're looking for is as price approaches 1663 or thereabouts, you're looking for a bullish reversal candle. If you don't get that, then price might target its 1.272 expansion, and that will get us down into the 1617 level. It turns out that 1617 would be basically at the bottom of the weekly profile. The weekly last week confirmed a road momentum indicator bottom. So we like this, but we also know that price, why did price stop where it did last week? Well, because it was right in the top of that profile. Out 1834. So we know where the sellers are located. And the question is, where are the buyers next? Well, that daily time frame says wait for that A to B equals CD pattern to complete. You'd love it to kind of tie itself into towards that 1619 level. And that would be the time to fire away or add to a position inside of BFC. The monthly chart needs a bullish reversal candle by tomorrow to confirm a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom. Don't know whether that will happen or not. Not if we're talking about headed lower out here. So that's what I see when I take a look at BFC. I do hope that that helps whoever requested it out. Uh, Apple. I do know Nancy is the one who requested Apple. And uh, if we take a look at Apple out here, much like we took a look at inside the NDX 100 and the NQ, it's going to complete its TD9 count bottom pattern today. Now, there is a new daily profile here in Apple. This one's solid. We don't have to wait for this evening for this to confirm, Nancy. And that would be support at 168.10. And resistance is in a zone. And the zone for the profile is 172.97, 174.19. Now, Apple first has to deal with its first area of resistance. And that is that oscillator and change line. Its current print is 171.40. Of course, that's going to change in cents as price moves up and down. But if price can overcome that, it should make a run for that resistance zone. Again, 172.97, 174.19. The weekly time frame chart has an A to B equal CD to the downside. Is it confirmed? Well, the B point out here, this is the volume. Volume from the week uh, ended August 18th was 261 million shares. When it was passed, it was 285 million shares. Now, that A to B equals CD to the downside would look something like this. We'll draw on the A to B point. We'll just move this over to that uh, C point area. Again, this is just an approximation. I'm not using it right to the T, so to speak. But here we look at uh, not that much further to go to complete the one-to-one, -one, the 163 ish type area. But it's still below even weekly profiles out there. Now, much like the NQ, there are potentially two different A to B equals CD pendants that one could draw in on Apple. Was the second one confirmed? Well, that second one would be a – it was not confirmed because price did not close below the B point, which would be the week of September 29th. So Stevie takes that back. There's only one A to B equals CD to the downside right now inside of Apple on a – monthly time frame price is got a new profile and so if the daily td9 count pattern is broken one that a to b equals cd to the downside we looked at an apple should complete and we may get to move all the way back to 147.01 that is the bottom of its monthly profile but right now today nancy i know you're a shorter term trader the signals out we should see a rally and that rally would be 171.40 ish and the price can close above it the 172 to 174 range out there so that's when we take a look at the apple charts with that's what they're communicating to you and i there was a request to take a look at tesla i think that's john c who might be short but if if I'm wrong, my apology. We take a look at Tesla out here. What is Tesla doing? That's a great question. It's uh, trading below a swing point out here that um, might that did form a uh, buy the D point pattern and a TD nine count bottom. So that will be negated. The TD nine count pattern will be negated if a if price closes today below 202.51, and we're trading right now at about. 199 and change out here. Let me see exactly where we're trading at. We're trading at 198.03. So at this stage here, that says stay with your short position. Um, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. The swing point, which was the week of August 18th, did volume of 556 million shares. It was passed last week with 
585 million. So 585 took out 556. That is a weekly A to B equals CD to the downside pattern inside of Tesla. Let's try to get a feel for where that takes us to. My eyes are looking at 164 and change out there. But let's see if price gets down to that level or even below that. Nope, but, uh, the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD gets us down in about the 190-ish type range out there. So you've got a weekly A to B equals CD pattern. You've got a daily, I'm going to say... No bottom signal whatsoever. I don't think that wave seven pattern, that wave seven is not a uh, is not really an active signal out here. And on the monthly time frame, Tesla has support in the 144 to 165 level. So I like your short trade. I don't have any uh, reason to suggest that you get out of it unless if by day's end, uh, Tesla is able to close back above that TD9 count bottom level. That's a trading day here again of October 23rd. That low is 202.51. If that were to happen to you, John, that might be signaling something else inside of Tesla. Otherwise, looks like it wants to continue to move uh, lower. The next request was to take a look at the XLY. And the XLY completed a TD9 count bottom. It did that a couple of days ago. That was on the trading session of October 26th. When you form a bottom, what typically happens? I know you get tired of me saying this, but how else can I analyze a chart unless I tell you what it's going to do? In this case here, we would have said if we looked at this chart, on the 26th, we would have said price is going to go target its oscillator and change on. In fact, I'm sure in my evening update newsletter, that's exactly what it said out there. And voila, boom, bang, that's what we've got going on right now. 151.68 is that oscillator and change line inside of the XLE, XLE, XLY out there. Don't worry, I'm learning how to speak. And uh, and that speech says if price is able to close above 151.67, then we should see a further rally. And that further rally would be into its sell zone. That zone is 153.45 to 154.77. You don't have a bottom signal on the weekly. That would require a bullish reversal candle. The monthly chart out here is just consolidated with inside its profile. So keep an eye on the XLY. If it were to close below the low from a couple of days ago, that low, by the way, is priced at 147.83. That tells us we're getting down to the 144.04 area at least. But right now you've got a nice bottom, but prices held resistance out there, and that's a little stinker. The next question was to take a look at SPYG. So let's take a look at SPYG. We'll just do that here because I know I didn't have chance, I didn't have the space to put in that symbol. So let's see what SPYG is doing. I guess that was for Coda. So you're welcome, Coda. SPYG uh, is got what? It's got a TD9 count bottom. Coda, maybe this one is for you as well. That's going to complete today. Now, just like we looked at in the XLY, what should happen here? Price should run all the way up to that oscillator and change line. This might be some type of uh, option trade that uh, somebody out there might want to consider. Price should make its way up to 58.35 out there. 58.35 to 58.49. If price were to uh, close below the low of the pattern right now, that's going to be Friday's low. That low is at 56.78. That would negate that signal, tell us we're headed lower. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, a couple of potential A to B equals CD patterns that are present, uh, no bottoming signal otherwise. So this needs a bullish reversal candle uh, in order to confirm a bottom. Its price target area is around 56.07. That's where price recently broke out from. And on a monthly basis, 54.65 would be the next downside target for SPYG. But the daily suggests we at least get a little short-term rally up towards 58.35. We get back to this break, we'll look at IBRX and TGB. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, though, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for Immunity Bio. The ticker symbol here is IBRX. This thing has been on quite a roll over the last five, six trading sessions out here, and it's made it right up to its resistance levels. And the levels are at 295. That's a daily TD9 count breakdown resistance area. When you get back to a breakdown resistance level, that can be a top. We don't have a topping signal, but that can be a top. We look at the monthly chart. That's where the other level of resistance comes. That's at 298. So we're coming into the end of the month tomorrow. Prices made a uh, move up to 306. It's found resistance at the 298 level. So, Dan, what you'd love is you'd love to see tomorrow a close above 298. If we get that, boy, that says we are off to the races. Now, those races, the next level of resistance that I have is at 1814. We're not that silly to, you know, go down that path just yet, but that's what the uh, next level of resistance would be that I've got on the monthly or the weekly time frame. The next area, the, the, that, an area before that, now that I open up the daily time frame chart above 295, would take us back to about 670. That 670 level, that was tested before. That was a TD9 count that formed as that was taking place. That was back on May the 9th out there. So the key level, again, by days, uh, by week, by tomorrow's close. Get it out, Stevie. 298. If you can close above that, that would be a beautiful thing for IBRX. So I hope that helps you out, and uh, best of luck. If it doesn't close above, it doesn't mean that it's a bad bad trade or anything like that. It just means we could see a retracement level, maybe a two-day retracement out there. Next request was to take a look at TGB. So we take a look at TGB. This is a Tiseco Mines out here. What do we have? What do we have? I'm going to guess we've got an A to B equals CD to the downside that completed a buy the D point pattern on Friday. So I see one out here. Let's just see if it actually did complete it or not. We're just going to go to the A to B level. Boy, it doesn't look like it completed it, Stevie, but it doesn't matter. Let's go take a look. Nah, it, did, it did not complete that A to B equals CD. So I don't have a pattern per se on the daily time frame out here but what we do have is we have price that is consolidating with inside its daily profile so the first signal that you're looking for here is if price could close above the top of that resistance level that would be at 114 and do it for two consecutive sessions even if i don't have a bottom that would be the sign of a bottom because price would have ta you know taken out a resistance level that would then signal that Tseiko mines would make a move up to the 122 level the weekly time frame chart no bottom pattern there 
I suggest lower price for below profile, below red oscillator and change line. But still, I'd watch the resistance level on that daily time frame first at the buck 14. On a monthly time frame, the Seiko Mines has pulled back to an area of support. That's at a dollar four. That is below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. So it isn't a support zone out here. Again, at the Seiko Mines, I'd love to see a close above 114, two consecutive days. Ought to get you up to 122. 122, which is the TD9 count breakdown level for the daily time frame. It also is the weekly oscillator and change line area. So that's what it looks like when we take a look at Taseco Mines. Next request is to take a look at ticker symbol ARM, which I don't think is ARM Holdings because that was the ETF out there. But it is ARM Holdings. If this is ARM Holdings, why do I not have much data on that? In any event, uh, let's take a look at ARM Holdings out here. At least what we can say is that this did confirm a road's momentum indicator bottom. It did this on October 23rd. Now, price is pulling into that swing point. That swing point did volume on that day of 9.9 .9 million shares. Today, you're pulling back with really light volume. In over two hours of trading, you've done 1.4 million shares. So you got 1.4 coming into 9.9. .9. Boy, you'd love to find a little buy signal here on an intraday time period. We don't have enough data to really spend any time inside of the uh, weekly or the monthly. Just no data there. So we're going to have to move down to that 30-minute chart out there. Yeah, I can see it recently came an IPO again out there. So thank you for that. If we take a look at ARM Holdings on its 30-minute time frame, you might have that signal right now. So was that you, Dunk? I don't know who asked for that. My apology. I think it was Dunk and Steve out here. So if you're looking for a place to enter... You got two different options out here. One, on the 30-minute chart, there's an A to B equals CD. It looks like the one-to-one -one has probably completed. But let's go find out and make sure. Let's move this over. Yeah, it is more than completed. So a bullish reversal can on a 30-minute time frame, which I'd love to see, Duncan, would give you a buy the D point pattern. And you might get that uh, at uh, 12 noon. What you already do have is a TD9 count bottom, which should take price up to that oscillator and change line at 48.37. You can see the resistance levels above overhead out here. If you were to get in this trade right now, and there would be a battle at 49.16, 49.29, that'd be the important battle. If price can clear that, you'd have another battle at 49.55 and finally at 50.12. So you're looking at the 30-minute time frame chart to give you a potential entry point. You'd love to see that little Gartley buy pattern have a bullish reversal candle at 12 noon or at least sometime uh, on a 30-minute bar out here but you do have that td9 count bottom so it's really a good setup for you if you've been eyeing arm holdings ticker symbol arm so duncan i hope that uh, that helps you out with regard to that yes and doing business with nvidia gotcha the next question that came in is a request to take a look at ticker symbol podc out here so let's pull up uh, the charts for podc see what they are doing again another it looks like ipo recently in the last couple of months so we don't have any data on the uh, monthly or the weekly, we do on the daily. And the daily's got a TD9 count top. And that TD9 count top, the high of that TD9 count top, what's that key level, 356. Now, it was a trading session here of uh, October the 19th. If price were to close above that level, that would negate that signal and say we're moving higher. Higher to where? Well, you know, there's an A to B equals CD pattern. We can see that. That's not going to get us too much. Well, let's see where that actually takes us to. So we'll draw an A to B. Then we'll draw in uh, the uh, we'll just move this over to the uh, C point out there. And it's really not that much higher really than where we're at out there. 381. So it'll be an expansion of that. Now, there is a new daily profile. It's not being picked up by my white background system out here, but it is being packed, uh, picked up by my black background system, the e-signal system. And that new profile has resistance up at 351. So that's another level to monitor, 351. Of course, we were monitoring that TD9 count high at 356. So that's really going to be the key level out there that you want to see PODC close above to signal its intent to move higher. If we take a look at a short-term time frame chart, I don't want to look at the 10-minute chart, not that I don't want to, but I really don't want to. Let's go take a look at the 30-minute. Uh, well, the, it's just a consolidation on a 10-minute chart. That's between its TD9 count bottom at the level of 306 and then TD9 count breakdown resistance at 340. So maybe the 10-minute chart has given us the information that we wanted to know anyway. So that's PODC. I do hope that that helps uh, whoever requested that out um i think i've gotten through everything i think i have gotten through everything uh mm -mm 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 -mm. 
I do believe I have been able to get through everything. So that's a beautiful thing. So we got about 30 seconds to go. Let me just take a quick peek here on the um, charts here. If I just simply go back real quickly uh, to my uh, charts, the nine panel charts that we use for that 11 a.m. update out here real quickly, we see the U.S. dollar index is moving lower. There is a new profile that is attempting to form. And that support level out here is at 105.80. So that's an area most certainly to watch out here for the rest of the day inside of the U.S. dollar index. So brand new profile just forming as we came on the air out there. So we'll watch that level. And that's again at 105.80. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. commodities and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe which is why it's a great time to try out teddy kegstat's tiger forex report teddy kegstat breaks down the forex markets every monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures forex stocks and options teddy releases his weekly tiger forex report every monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs including the dollar index the euro dollar pound dollar dollar swiss dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we talked about the U.S. dollar index uh, pulling back uh, before it went to break, that new profile that is attempting to form that's got support at 105.80. If we look at the three primary currency pairs that uh, make up 83% of the U.S. dollar index, the euro we can see has been moving higher. Uh, it is trading above uh, Friday's high. It's suggesting you and I wants to go target 1.0673. Now, if it does that and gets all the way up there, the U.S. dollar index is likely to break through that 105.80 level out there. The yen is also part Participating the yen uh, on Friday uh, confirmed a road momentum indicator top. We're trading below Friday's low out there. Uh, looks like this wants to keep moving lower. That means it's getting stronger, and the U.S. dollar index is getting weaker. And the Great British Pound as well found support at that red oscillator and change line. It's trading just about above Friday's high out there. That suggests that it wants to move higher. If these three currency pairs continue doing what they're doing right now, well, then we're going to see the U.S. dollar index continue to move lower. Again, maybe that new profile doesn't form at day's end but right now watch the 105.80 level but when we get underneath the covers of the instruments that uh, make up that U.S. dollar index here it looks like these want to continue to move higher on my other screen I'm looking at the intraday charts the 30 minute time frame chart which by the way at uh, 9 a.m. this morning uh, we had a TD9 count top on that 30-minute chart. That most certainly has taken hold out here. But I don't see any kind of toppings. I don't see a bottoming signal on that 30-minute chart, nor do I see a topping signal for the euro or the Great British Pound. So it does look like they want to continue to move higher. Folks, I hope that helps you out. Hey, at day's end, watch that semiconductor index. If that is able to close back inside and retain that TD9 count bottom, all that requires is a close today above 31.7355. We've likely seen a bottom for at least a couple of days out there in the equity markets. Stay tuned, folks, for all the great programming. I'll be back with you and Tom at about 3.15. Have a magnificent and marvelous Monday. Be safe out there.